Hi there and welcome to my garden. This is your first time joining my channel. My name is Tracy and I'm a small-scale gardener living on the prairies in Saskatchewan, Canada. Or if you are already one of my subscribers and you have your name entered into my subscriber giveaway draw, stay tuned for the draw coming later on in this video. So we are now in uh, mid-August and everything in the garden is growing pretty good and we got lots of harvesting to start doing now. So as I've mentioned in past videos, we've been going through a really bad drought this summer. It's been super hot and uh, this past weekend we broke some more records for um, high temperatures. But I'm glad to say that uh, the last couple days we've received some rain. We've gotten about quarter inch of rain in the last uh, 24 to 48 hours so I think that has um, is really going to help green things up here at least for um, our grasses and our pastures for the cattle so I'm just going to take you for a walk around my garden today and show you what's what I'm harvesting and how things are going So this is my little onion patch that I uh, grew this year and this is my first time that I have done uh, growing onions from seed. So I did two kinds. I did a red onion and a yellow um, globe type onion. I was hoping for bigger bulbs because um, when I see other people's gardens they seem to have you know the huge uh, onion bulbs. Mine aren't too big but um, you know these came from seeds so they're better than nothing and I'm just going to pick them all out today and uh, put them in my herb, herb dryer in the shed and let them dry out a bit so these are long day onions that are the kind that we should grow here on the prairies because we have very long uh, days of sunlight during the summer these are suited for our climate here but if anybody has some tips on how to grow bigger onions, I would love to hear about that in the comments because I want to do it again next year, but I want to get bigger bulbs. So this is my um, herb dryer that I've talked about in a couple other videos of mine that um, I highly recommend if you have some space in your garden shed or in your garden or anywhere that it's you know protected from wind. Um, to grab one of these off Amazon. I'll leave the link below. It was, um, I can't remember the price. I'll, I'll, I'll post the link below so that you can uh, check it out, but it's not that much money. It works great. It's got five different layers that you can put your herbs, your flowers, and uh, dry out your garlic and onions. So I had my garlic drying in here for a couple weeks now, and I'm just gonna toss my onions in there let them dry out. It's great because all the dirt just kind of falls off. You can shake this out and clean it out very easily. Don't end up with a lot of dirt in your house that way. Gets lots of airflow. So I've been collecting calendula petals, plantain weeds, dandelions, and I'm starting to grab different flowers such as the snapdragon here. When you see that the uh, the pods on there are starting to turn brown and dry, just clip them off. I keep them in just these coffee filters because as you can see, there's already seeds kind of coming off on here. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. So once these are good and dry, I take them into the house and uh, collect the seeds and put them away till next winter when I will start them. And I also use it to dry my herbs. I just go and uh, harvest the basil and the oregano thyme as it grows. Give it a little wash and a rinse. Bring them out here. Put them in these little mesh containers that I got from the dollar store. So there's still lots of airflow. And uh, set them in here until they're good and dry. Just jar them up for the winter. So another thing that I grew for the first time this year was celery and um, I have it in my square foot garden here and I started this from seed indoors this winter and I got a pretty good couple stalks of a couple celery plants coming here. 
I've been chopping some off and using it in, you know, my um, different salads and making egg salad sandwiches or tuna salad. Uh, these stalks have been really good. So I will probably be harvesting the celery pretty soon and what I don't eat fresh I can freeze and save for soups. So I have two kinds of beans growing up my um, trellis here. We got some purple beans that still have not um, started producing any beans yet. They're still in the blooming stage so I'm not sure if they have a longer maturity than my my green pole beans but uh, still not seeing much coming up on them yet and my bush beans and my pole beans Kentucky pole beans here are producing a lot of beans now I need to get picking these today but yeah there's some nice green beans on here I want to make some more of my spicy pickled green beans so I will get harvesting these probably today and uh, hopefully get a jar or two made up this week so on the other side of my um, square foot garden here is where my cucumbers are growing and I've been really disappointed with the amount of fruit that I've taken off them. They seem to be healthy and as you can see I have them growing up this trellis. There's lots of blooms but very little fruit. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I have three different kinds growing here. I think it's a pickling, a straight eight, and an English. So whether they don't like being close to each other or if I don't have them thinned out enough, I'm not sure. But So if anybody has any tips, they can leave me in the comments on how to get your cucumbers to produce better. I would love to hear about it. Not too much as far as actual cucumbers are showing up here. So the peppers are looking really good this year. I had a few that I lost uh, to frost at the, in June there, but I got a few going here and I really like the, these Aurora peppers, they're so pretty. So they are all purple. They do show on the packages being different colors. So I'm gonna wait and see if they maybe turn to some different colors. I've uh, harvested a few and tasted them. They're about a medium hot type pepper not too super spicy but so I think I might try using a couple in a one jar uh, spicy dill pickle recipe that I want to try out and these are the sweet Italian peppers they are still very green but hopefully they will start turning a pretty red color And I have two Portugal pepper plants here that are producing a lot of nice little green peppers here. So these I plan to um, let ripen or if they don't ripen on the vine, I will harvest them and let them ripen and dry them up and grind it to some pepper flakes for the winter. So I do have a good variety of different uh, tomatoes going here. I have some sweet 100s and a couple different dwarf varieties, some tiny Tims. And my favorite this year is these Roma type tomatoes. I got two plants going over here in my square foot garden and then also a couple in the containers. And what I found is the ones growing here in the uh, square foot garden seem to be producing a lot bigger fruits. And I had a bit of um, blossom end rot going on with these, but I did, you know, try to keep them watered consistently. I added some, uh, some more nutrients to the soil a few weeks ago and been watering them really well. And it seems to have stopped the blossom end rot, so that's good. And I did some replanting of some lettuces and spinach here in my container. So this is the second round. They don't seem to be coming quite as 
fast and furious as they did in the spring. I think the hot weather is just not the best type weather for the lettuces, but I should be getting a few harvests out of these before the end of the season. And here's my potato crop that I do using the Ruth Stout method. I have two rows of uh, Yukon Gold and some Russet going here. My potatoes have not been as good as past years. For some reason this whole row of Red Norlands did not come up so I did do a second planting. But um, they have to grow pretty fast if they're going to make it to the end of our season here. And these are the um, baby red potatoes that I planted late July 4th. They went into the ground. They came up really fast, so that's good. They're growing good. And I kind of used them as a filler in my straw bed here to try and use up a bunch of space that was left empty this summer. So hopefully these will get another month of growth in and I can get some baby potatoes off of them. And I can see that this corn is not going to probably produce before the end of the season. Now these I started in eight cartons um, and then moved them out and put them under the straw. And I'm just not sure why but they, they were planted on the 6th of June. They just did not take off whether um, having them in the eight cartons slowed down the root growth um, not sure. So next year I will probably be trying a different method and see if I can get a better corn crop next year. And these are more potatoes that I started in containers late in the season. These are the red snappers planted on July 4th. And they took off like crazy. There's lots of blooms coming on them. So I'm very hopeful that I'm going to be able to have another good potato harvest from these containers soon. Something that I was really disappointed in is my squash. So I have uh, four different varieties growing in these two containers and they've been sending out tons of blooms. But uh, especially like the spaghetti squash, which is usually pretty easy to grow. It's setting out blooms. I can see some fruit, but then it, so you can see it doesn't, it's almost like it's not getting pollinated and they just die off. So I haven't been having much luck. So this is one here that would be the female. And uh, I don't know, I'll we'll hope, maybe I'll have to help it along with some pollination by hand, but usually these self-pollinate or the bees help pollinate these and they're not that hard to grow but this year um, for some reason maybe the containers are too small for the root system I'm not sure but something to uh, make note of this year and maybe try different next year my two compost stations have been going really well I've been adding, you know, different greens from the garden as a harvest stuff. I toss them in here. Any old soil from pots that I have harvested have been going in here, giving them lots of uh, air and water and churning them around. So I should have a good supply of finished compost, hopefully, by the end of the season that I can um, put into my beds here and replenish my containers. I'm really happy with how my flower boxes have held up here throughout the summer in the extreme heat that we've been having. So one of my favorite flowers to grow is the portulaca and they seem to really love the heat. They bloom non-stop all summer and I will probably be looking to collect seeds from these if I can once they start to uh, develop some pods of seeds so I can start them indoors and get another big crop of them for next year. So I hope you enjoyed uh, having a walk through the garden with me today. Once again, I just want to thank all my subscribers for supporting my channel and for all of you who uh, responded to my um, subscriber giveaway. It's time to go uh, 
do the draw and see who the winner is of the $20 Amazon gift card. So I'm going to be using TubeBuddy that does uh, takes all the comments from my video and will randomly pick one for me and the winner will be receiving a $20 Amazon gift card. So the winner is Mark V. So Mark V from Brandon, Manitoba, you have won a $20 gift card from Amazon. Thank you for leaving your comments and please reply to my email that I'll leave in the comments below. So once again, thank you for following me on my channel. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Thanks for watching.